Welcome to Montgomery High School. All right, good morning. I'm Mr. Eaton, your principal. Montgomery High School is one of the best high schools in America, largely because of you. I want this to be the absolute best year of your educational life. Uh, today, listen very carefully to the very, very important information that will be covered during this presentation. Fire and disaster drills. This comes from page 31 in the student handbook. Uh, drills. All drills will be held periodically and without warning to meet state requirements. Procedures for evacuating the building are posted in every classroom are discussed and discussed by each teacher. Uh, during drill, students are to remain quiet in a single file line with their teacher and follow instructions given. And students should not stop for books, coats, or backpacks. And when the drill is complete, should return to class immediately, both quietly and quickly. Food, drinks, gum, and candy. Uh, this is found on page 20 in the student handbook. Uh, cans, cups, and containers are not to be brought on school property at any time. Students may not have food or drinks outside the cafeteria at any time. Food and drinks in classrooms are not permitted, even water bottles. In the student handbook on pages 27 and 31, it addresses receiving gifts and deliveries during the school day. Montgomery High School is considered a closed campus, which means students are not allowed to receive deliveries of outside lunches, gifts, flowers, or notes that are not classified as an emergency from a parent or guardian lunch money, school projects, and any other items that are delivered to the school from parents may only be picked up before school, after school, or during passing periods. Students will not be given deliveries during lunches or class time. Students, attendance is a key factor in having a successful year. In addition, state law requires students to be in attendance at least 90% of the school year. As outlined in the handbook, on page one, if you are absent from school for any reason, you will need to bring a written note from a parent or guardian within two days of your absence. Notes will need to be turned into the attendance office before or after school only. If a note is not turned in within the two day time period, your absence will roll over to an unexcused absence. Absences over five consecutive days will require a doctor's note to be classified as excused. Juniors and seniors are granted two college visits per school year. Documentation and approval is required in advance. Absences of 10 or more days within a six month time period will result in a referral to truancy court. In order to receive credit in a class, students must be in attendance 90% of the school day. This means that once a student exceeds nine absences in any class, that student can and will lose credit for that class. They may ask for an attendance appeal committee to hear their reasons and consider issuing credit. Also, excessive absences will result in a denial of a student's VOE, which is required by the state of Texas to get a driver's license or permit. Truancy is addressed on page four of the student handbook. A truancy is defined as being absent from school or class without school or parent permission. Students will earn truancies for the following reason. Leaving school or class without permission, are on or near campus but not in class, leaving campus to go to the parking lot after arrival. If you do need to leave during the day or you arrive late to school, you must first go to the attendance office to sign in and avoid getting a truancy. What I wanted to let you know about truancies is that the first consequence is the Saturday school. After that, you can lose your parking privileges or you'll be going to ISS. You can lose your parking privileges for the rest of the school year if you get along on the discipline ladder far enough. So please make sure you don't go through those particular things. And also, truancy will keep you from being able to exempt on your final exams. Tardies, this is found on page four of the student handbook. Promptness to class is critical for student success. Students are expected to be in class, in their seat, ready to work when the tardy bell rings. Students will be given a one minute warning bell to let them know time is running out. Tardy stations are located on both the ninth grade and main campus. Regardless of a student's grade level, they should report to the nearest tardy station location. First and fifth period, they report to the, uh, each campus cafeteria. The rest of the periods, two, three, four, six, seven, and eight will report to the closest assistant principal's office. Students are given six emergency tardies to be used in case of emergency such as needing to go to the restroom, waking up late, etc. After that, students are consequenced for each subsequent tardy and tardies will start over each semester. Students who are more than eight minutes late will need to report to the attendance office for an absence. Today, what I wanted to visit with you about is going to be on dress code and also some of the small discipline infractions that we deal with on a daily basis. So let me first go to dress code. 
All right, when you're looking at dress code, and you should see some pictures come up on the screen right now. I just want to highlight and go quickly. We know you can't wear sunglasses inside the school. Pants need to be regular clothes. They cannot be pajama pants, and bandanas are not acceptable in any color displayed in any way. The second slide that you should be seeing um, is a young lady. She's got on her leggings as well as a short skirt and her midriff is showing. If you choose to wear leggings, that's fine to wear leggings to school, but what you have on over them have to be closer to your knee than the bottom of your derriere. So it's important that you make sure your skirt lengths or shirt lengths or whatever you're wearing over your leggings are appropriate and you could wear that without the leggings and be in dress code. Your midriff should be covered at all times, so make sure your shirts are long enough or your uh, pants are tall enough whichever way it needs to be. The next slide is the young lady who's a little bit excited but uh, piercings you can't really see her nose piercing but we do not allow any visible piercings except for your ears so make sure that those are out. You can't use the clear spacers it just needs to be totally out. We do not allow any kind of uh, hats or headwear like that so make sure you're taking, uh, taking that off and also don't bring your sleeping clothes to school that would not be appropriate to have at school. You may not notice, but she does have on a um, tank top in the background. Ladies, it has to be at least two inches on your shoulders, so make sure spaghetti straps, that kind of stuff, uh, sheer clothing, whatever you have on underneath all that stuff, it has to be at least two inches on your shoulder and no midriff showing. The next slide is a young man who's got a rip in his pants. And, um, and what I want to point out there is if you have any kind of holes or tears or anything like that, they need to be within dress code, meaning closer to your knee than the bottom of your derriere, and it can't be excessive. His is excessive and also too high. On the next uh, slide, we do have a young man who's got a do-rag on. Uh, he needs to shave, and also on his t-shirt, he does have uh, guns displayed on the t-shirt, so those would not be in dress code. Any kind of t-shirt, if it has a double meaning, um, or if it should have uh, pictures of guns, bombs, whatever, knives, the swords, those kind of things are not appropriate uh, for school. And then our last slide that we have here is a young man who's got a sleeveless shirt on. Gentlemen, you cannot wear a sleeveless shirt. You must have sleeves on your shirt. Some other things I want to point out um, before I go on is that if you have tattoos, tattoos need to be dis, uh, cannot be displayed at any time at school, so those would need to be covered up. And if you've got them on your, your lower arms, you're going to have to wear something to uh, cover them up because you will be considered out of dress code. If you are, um, oh, and also ladies, this usually see it on you, but sometimes it's with the guys, your hair color. Your hair color has to be a natural hair color. It cannot be, I know there's some wild colors with the greens and the blues and the fun colors like that, but your hair color has to be a natural hair color. You don't have to be born with it, but someone would have had to been born with it. So please make sure that you are refraining from uh, dyeing your hair those crazy colors uh, until the summertime so you don't have to deal with it during school. If you should get in trouble with dress code, we do try to correct it. Uh, the first two times after that, your parents would have to correct it. If you need to shave, gentlemen, it's a quarter, and you can, we'll send you to the nurse to, so you can shave, and we can try to get you back to class. So do know after that, you do start getting consequences, and we'll go over those shortly. Some of the minor things that I want to talk about that kids have gotten in trouble for uh, that we see quite often is just messing around, disrupting class those kind of things. You need to follow with the rules of your class, what your teacher has established. Your teacher's trying to get across the information that she's prepared or he's prepared for you for that particular day. And so disrupting the classroom is not appropriate. Even if you're talking to your friends and you let a curse word slip, that's not appropriate. Those are things you should be sent to the office for. Um, when your teacher asks you to do something or any adult on this campus asks you to do something, you are expected to comply. And if you don't comply, those are things that you can be sent to the, the office for. Another thing, too, is PDA. I, I know we're in high school. I know you want to hold hands when you're going down the hall, maybe kiss each other on cheek goodbye. Uh, but we don't need to see who you're making out with, okay? So we need to keep the PDA needs to not be going on. Um, your teachers are going to send you to us if, if you are, and it's an embarrassing phone call that we have to make when we have to tell your parents that you're making da making out in the in the hallways in lieu of just getting to class on time. Each of these particular um, consequences can carry an ASD, maybe a Saturday school 
Meds and prescription drugs can be found on page 10 of the student handbook. All medications from over-the-counter cough drops to prescription medication must be delivered to the nurse on campus by a parent or guardian. All medications must be in their original containers and clearly labeled with the instructions and the student's name. No medication of any kind may be in a student's possession, in their car, or locker. Any violation will result in disciplinary consequences. Students may carry an inhaler for asthma with them if they have a doctor's note. However, the student must first demonstrate to the nurse that they can appropriately use their inhaler, and a student must have a second inhaler at the nurse's station for emergency purposes. At the end of the year, a parent or guardian may pick up leftover medications. If they are unable to do so, meds will be disposed of. Um, tobacco, it, it, along with tobacco and the vapor cigarettes, either one of those are going to carry ISS assignments and you can receive a citation um, for those particular items. Neither one of them are legal for anyone to have on campus regardless of your age. So even if you're old enough to buy them, you may not have them on campus. Cursing out your teacher, it's not going to do you any good. I know if you should curse at your teacher, there's something wrong. You're upset about some particular, if it's a grade or assignment or something that's happened. But one of the things that happens is you come to the office, you're going to get a long-term ISS assignment for cursing at your teacher, and really, you don't get focused in on what your concern was. You know, if your concern was your grade, we're not focusing on the grade, we're focusing in on your behavior. So hold your tongue. If you're upset about something, spend some time with your teacher to go over why you got the grade you did. See how you can correct that. Sometimes you have a chance to redo it and sometimes you don't. But I know if you're cursing at them, the last thing you're going to get to do is have a second chance to redo an assignment. And that's really not where we want you to be. Another thing, and one that we do see when people aren't getting along in the hallway, is when they decide that we got to start yelling at each other. Now, there are different things that we look at. There are certain consequences if you're just yelling. There are certain consequences if you're pushing and shoving. And there are certain consequences if you're fighting. Now, fighting, even if you swing and miss, still counts as fighting. So poor aim is not going to get you out of trouble. But all of those will carry some type of ISS assignments. We can't afford the disruptions on campus. And it's a safety issue as well as you don't need to be going through those particular things. Some other things is uh, inappropriate use of computers. Uh, a lot of times that will follow when you're going to sites that deal with um, questionable activities or questionable uh, topics in nature. Those can also carry some ISS assignments. There are different levels of pornography type situations. Please refrain from any kind of pornography. It doesn't actually have to be um, people that are, that are in that as far as um, if it's in a magazine or if it's stick figures, that's where I was going with that, stick figures, that kind of stuff. Any, even the joke shirts and t-shirts and stuff, those are all inappropriate. Uh, depending on the age level of, the, of who's in the pictures and also if they're a student at our high school or a student in MISD will de uh, depict the, the consequences that you could receive. It can be a long-term ISS assignment up to an expulsion. So please refrain from any kind of weird stuff like that because you know that that's something that we'll take very seriously. Bus issues, page 17 and 18. MISD provides transportation to eligible students within MISD boundaries. Students are expected to board and depart the bus only at one designated bus stop. Due to the rapid growth, MISD students are no longer allowed to ride buses with friends for various reasons. Students are allowed only to board their registered bus. Rules and consequences can be found in the handbook on pages 17 and 18. If the bus driver feels it is warranted, a MISD police officer may remove the student for any offense. Academic integrity can be found on page 15 of the student handbook. MISD expects its students to maintain the highest degree of academic ethics, which means putting the utmost effort into all assignments and avoiding plagiarism and cheating. Both plagiarism and cheating demonstrate a, la demonstrate a lack of integrity and character consistent with the goals and values of MISD. Plagiarism includes but is not limited to submitting the work of tutors, parents, siblings, or friends as your own, submitting material written by someone else or rephrasing the ideas of another without giving the author's name or source, submitting assignments that were previously graded as new material, cheating includes but is not limited to 
copying, texting, faxing, emailing, or in any way duplicating assignments that are turned in wholly or in part as original work, giving or receiving answers during tests or quizzes, taking credit for group work when you have not contributed towards the final result, and accessing a test or quiz for the purpose of determining the questions in advance of its administration. Any student caught cheating or plagiarizing will receive a grade of zero for the academic work involved and the parents of the student will be notified. Students will also receive a UN conduct during the appropriate academic grading period. Exam exemptions can be found on page 30 of the student handbook. Exemptions are designed to reward students for their good grades, near perfect attendance, and good behavior. To earn exemptions from final exams, students must meet the following guidelines. Have no more than four absences per period. Any unexcused absent will result in loss of exemptions. They must have no outstanding fines, fees, or holds. Students may not have any discipline referrals resulting in truancy, no more than one ISS assignment, and no ISS assignment or DAP placement that is more than five days. Students must have a class average of 80 or higher both semesters. Exemptions are as follows. During the first semester, seniors may exempt four finals, but only two can come from the core class. Juniors may exempt three finals with only two from the core class. However, they may not exempt the U.S. History final. Freshmen and sophomores will take all finals. For the second semester, seniors and juniors may exempt all exams. Freshmen and sophomores may exempt three of their final exams. I do need to talk about some more serious offenses. We don't see this very often at school, but unfortunately, some of your peers will choose to make uh, some poor decisions. Some of those are fighting. If you guys aren't getting along, guys or gals, it doesn't matter, but the last thing you want to do is take it out in the hallway or in the parking lot or cafeteria or restroom or wherever where you're fighting each other. If you have some issues, come see us. Let us see what we can do to help you out. If you do engage in fighting, one of the things that's going to happen is you will be suspended from school, you do receive a citation, and you do receive a long-term ISS assignment. These are things we want to avoid. We want you in class. So if you are having issues with someone, we encourage that you come see us. I know Mr. Lopez is going to talk about um, some more serious things when you're worried about people bothering you, and um, he'll go over that in another segment. If you're bringing to school uh, any kind of herbal, over-the-counter medication, those things will also fall into uh, a, a major category for uh, some ISS assignment. Some of our major things can lead into a DAP assignment. Mr. Lopez will go over DAP assignments. I'm not going to spend time on that at this time. But do realize that you can get in trouble with these long-term ISS assignments with a citation and possible suspension. Bullying can be found on page 15, which occurs when a student or a group of students engage in written or verbal expression, expression through electronic means, physical conduct against other students on school property, at a school sponsored or related activity, or in a district operated vehicle, and the behavior results in harm to a student or their property, places a student in reasonable fear of physical harm or damage to students' property or is severe, persistent, and pervasive that it creates an intimidating, threatening, or abusive educational environment. Bullying also occurs in an exploit or imbalance of power between the student perpetrator and the student victim. Bullying could include hazing, threats, taunting, teasing, confinement, assault, demands for money, destruction of property, theft of possessions, name calling, rumor spreading, or ostracism. Bullying through electronic means is classified as cyberbullying. If a student feels that they have experienced or witnessed bullying, it should be reported as soon as possible to obtain assistance and intervention. Disciplinary action may be taken if the conduct did not rise to the level of bullying. Retaliation is strictly prohibited and will result in additional disciplinary consequences. On page 16, dating violence. Dating violence occurs when a person or past dating relationship uses physical, sexual, verbal or emotional abuse to harm, threaten, intimidate, or control the other person in the relationship. Examples may include, but are not limited to, physical or sexual assault, name calling, put downs, threats to family or self if the relationship ends. 
After school detention is located in 0101, it's from 245 to 405. We typically give you six days to serve it. And then Saturday school is from 845 to noon in the main campus cafeteria. If you don't serve these consequences, if you drive to school, you'll lose parking and for a short amount of time. But sometimes a short amount of time can seem like an eternity. And if you um, don't drive to school, you would receive an ISS assignment. It's not a choice of what you get to do. If you drive to school, you're losing parking. If you don't drive to school, you're getting ISS. That's how we work on those. ISS on page 20. The students assigned to ISS are to promptly go to ISS once the initial bell rings for the beginning of school and when it ends to leave the ISS room and also campus. Students assigned to ISS are not allowed to participate in after school practices, games, or trips. Students assigned to ISS will follow the following guidelines. Must bring all materials, books with them to the ISS room. Students may not talk, sleep, chew gum, or pass notes. Students will be given a break in the morning, in the afternoon, and also a lunch break. Student must have a sack lunch or order a sandwich from the cafeteria while in ISS. ISS students are responsible for all of their work and assignments will be delivered back to their respective teachers. DAP placement, the appendix page 9. DAP is the Disciplinary and Alternative Educational Placement Program. It is for students that commit more serious offenses in the MISD Code of Conduct. Students that are placed in DAP for any of the following offenses on or while attending school sponsored or school related activity on or off campus include but are not limited to the following possession of a weapon, vandalism, robbery or theft, blackmail, aggressive disruptive action which interferes with school activities, profanity, vulgar language or obscene gestures directed to teachers or other staff members, fighting, committing physical abuse or threatening physical abuse, sexual harassment or of a district employee or employee or volunteer. Falsification of records, passes, or school-related materials. Possession of distributional pornographic materials. Leaving school grounds without permission. Making or assisting in making threats, including threats to individuals or groups. Refusal to accept disciplinary techniques by administrator or teacher. Possessing or, look possessing or selling look-alike drugs and contraband, including drug paraphernalia. Possessing look-alike weapons, possession or use of smoke or stink bombs. Criminal misconduct not classified as a felony, assault, misconduct which includes elements of gang related activity. Students in DAP may not allow to be at any school sponsored events or school related activities on or off campus and specifics are posted in every classroom. So hopefully the information that I shared with you today will help you make some better choices when you're at school. If you'll please make sure you look in your teacher's classroom, you do have the discipline ladder posted up there. We can't list everything that students would um, get involved in, but we do want to make sure that we're setting up our schools so it's an environment where you can learn and take care of the things that you would like to take care of and have a great productive school year. Thank you. It's a great day to be a Montgomery Bear!